Our examination of the newly released archive of government drone video continues with part three in our series. The U.S. Geological Survey recently made over a thousand video files available to the public. They were recorded by unoccupied aircraft systems between May and September 2018, during the four-month eruption of Kilauea Volcano on the Lower East Rift Zone. Picking up where we left off, chronologically, after the loss of Kapoho, most of the video captured at this time focused on the long lava channel, created by the dominant vent of the Puna eruption, known as Fissure 8. When this drone video was recorded, lava fountains from the fissure were still reaching over 100 feet high, sending a shower of molten fragments over the rim of the cone, building it higher day by day. At night, the glow from the fissure and its lava channel lit up the sky. The eruption on the East Rift Zone would end just a few months after this recording, and Kilauea would go quiet for over two years. Today, the community is still waiting for an appropriate Hawaiian name for this fissure to be made official. The Hawaii Board on Geographic Names is using community input to reach a decision. The proposal supported by P. Ilani Ka'avaloa and her family is a leading candidate. This is the audio of her testimony at the most recent board meeting held virtually. I mahalo again for um, inviting us to uh, come back and offer um, more information or to support the, the names that we have um, submitted. For me, I still stand by Ahu Ailaho, and um, for the purpose and the reasons in which um, the families of Lower Puna, the families from within the area um, and our own personal experiences um, with regards to the event itself and how it, it came to be. My personal experience is a lifetime of being around the lava flow, having our own home spared from the lava flows from 1970 to present. For me, we saw the difference in regards to um, the lava itself and how the lava erupted. Um, this particular eruption was more um, aggressive, more um, intense, you know, comparing to previous eruptions. Um, taking into account also um, the things that the geologists had mentioned of the lava being a lot older than the more recent lava flows. And so um, when we came together as a community, members of the community whose families um, can trace their genealogy back um, you know, multiple generations because our families were born and raised. We didn't come from another district and, you know, move into this. This is our families were born and raised in Lower Puna. Uh, when we came together, we, you know, we literally discussed what we saw, what our Na'o was telling us, what what the, you know, the things that we were kilo kiloing, and I hate to say kilo kiloing because that's not an appropriate way of lelo. We saw that this was indeed, um, at first, the initial eruption wasn't Pele. And therefore, we went in and we, you know, I, I'm pretty sure like everybody else, you know, we went into prayer, we went into Pune, um, we, you know, asked for more guidance, more vision, um, more, you know, closer in-depth observations. Over the course of time, more of the visuals became apparent to us that this eruption was indeed um, Aila'o. 
And then later on, it meant, you know, we were able to see the pairing of both um, Pele and O. And so when you look at, you know, um, Mo'olelo, when you look into our history, um, Aila'o wasn't, you know, um, written literature. It didn't paint him to be um, as compassionate. One, Mo'olelo states that, you know, he ran away uh, upon hearing um, the arrival of Pele. But uh, many of us in Puna, we felt that that wasn't the case. And um, I, you know, I wasn't born in the 1700s, you know, or I wasn't born during the time in which our kupuna um, paid um, homage to him or um, offerings to him as an akua. But um, I, you know, I did um, go and look and I believe it was in the book of Kapo'eo Kavakahiko um, or Kapo'e Kahiko. Um, and I, if I'm not mistaken, it was page 83. And it stated, it talked about um, Aumakua. And in there, it said, it mentioned, um, that um, families who worship um, Aila'o, and it mentioned his name. It didn't say Pele, it said Aila'o. That when their family members passed, their kino were wrapped in kapa and taken up to Kilauea Iki, in which they were laid and um, and um, placed into, at that time, had lava in the bottom of Kilauea Iki. And the kino of these Ohana members were placed into the lava and they became Aumakua of Ainla'o. And so they became a part of that Pele, um, Pele Ohana. And um, when I heard of that, you know, there are a lot of things that were also happening. So during that time, I also came across a member of um, this family. And um, he is also named Aila O. That's his Inua Hawaii, is Aila O. And it all happened during this time. And I was, you know, you can only say coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. But if all of these coincidences are happening at the same time, to me, I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, I see it as a ho'ainona. And so upon talking to this um person that um, is able to, you know, trace his lineage back to Aila'o, um, he also shared mo'olelo of how his, you know, kupuna, his tutu and great-grandparent shared their mo'olelo of how, you know, just like the book had said, that there, Ohana used to practice that. And he shared he is the last of his family to carry that name. And his tutu um, told him that after, his, after him, there is to be no one else called or to be given that name within their family. Um, and so he thought that that was um, interesting that upon him returning home here to the Big Island, that this eruption had taken place. In, in our history and in our culture, 
that I don't want that to be the last thing that is remembered of him, of Ayla O. Yeah. I want us to be able to haku new mele, new mo'oleno, to share a different story about, you know, his awakening. You know, maybe he, you know, I don't, like we say, many of us didn't feel that he ran away. But he, he knew that, you know, Pele came to, to continue and she was much younger. He was older. I don't know. That could be a new mo'oleno. But to be able to continue this traditional practice of storytelling in our own way, utilizing this inoa, um, the next meeting of the Hawaii Board on Geographic Names is set for March 2nd. The naming of Fisher 8 is on the agenda.